Welcome to another exciting episode of Homefront. It's Rome, and today we are going home front on the front line. We are heading to a COVID-19 health facility in Trinidad and Tobago, and we are going to be the first camera crew to take you into the hot zone live and direct. Not only that, we are going to speak with a COVID-19 patient at that facility. Get ready, buckle up, because this episode, we are going live and direct. Let's go. We are out of the studio and we are on the front line in a COVID-19 health facility. And we're going to take you all through the step-by-step -step process of how each and every day our healthcare workers have to, is it done in, you say, Dr. Taylor? Yeah. They have to done, meaning they have to put on their PPE before they enter the hot zone. So my first step is hand sanitizer. Excellent. All right. All right. And then mask. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let's go with this. Right. Thanks, sir. And let's fix it. Yeah. Over here. Excellent. Right. All right. And now we put on the gloves. So you all do this every day before you enter? Every day, sometimes multiple times a day, left hand. Left hand. Yeah. And you all have to get help. So done? Yeah, yeah. So usually we would have a, um, a done in this. Mm -hmm. And she would essentially um, help us um, with the whole procedure. All right. Um, All right. Gloves on. Good. Some hand sanitizer. Safety first. <laughs> so we have the gloves. We have one. Of, I, I I forgot to mention. As you would see, I'm done in some different attire today. I'm in full scrub. Right. I'm watching. I'm watching Doctor Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um. Now we can let you sit down. Okay. Right. So this is a shoe covering. All right, this is to protect the shoes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this is to protect the shoes so that if we, when we head into the hot zone, mm -hmm. um, if there's any traces of the virus that may be on the floor, yeah. uh, maybe you may walk on it and take it back home exactly we don't want that to happen at all okay so we have a shoe covering yeah all right now we would we could stand up so now we have the gong all right this is a surgical gong or isolation gong right yes. So as you can see, from the glove, it goes into a sleeve, and the sleeve is sort of elastic, so it locks in place. So you can see that there are no spaces in between the glove and my arm. Things getting kind of hot. <laughs> yeah, you would find that, that you might sort of sweat a bit. Right. So we're making sure we're blocking all entry points. This is going the extra mile a bit. Right. And this is what we always have to do, go the extra mile. 
again as we said safety first so we're making sure there are no ports of entry for the virus to enter to be in contact with my body all right sanitize again And this is what now. So this is an apron just for added protection to the front of your body. Let's say you are doing a surgical procedure or any minor procedure. Uh, sometimes a patient's blood may end up on you or a patient vomits on you. Things like that. Or even urinate. Wow. So far, shoe coverings, we have scrubs, we have our apron, hmm? we had, um, what do you call it, the surgical, the surgical, well, the surgical Glove. gloves and the surgical Glove. gown. Yeah, and now the hairnet. Now the hairnet. Good. And now sanitize again. So after every step, you sanitize? Yeah. Okay. Now, final pairs of pair of gloves. Okay. This process alone seems like a task. Yeah. <laughs> Before we even get inside. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Double glove. Yeah, yeah. Added benefit. You know why? Especially if we again need to do a procedure on somebody, and let's say this glove becomes damaged. Uh -huh. We don't want that the next layer of protection is our own skin. Right. So we can easily remove this glove and place a new one, and we could sanitize this glove after every interaction as well, and wash, etc. Take the sanitizer again. Now. Oh, you get it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, final step now. So now we fix this thing. Comfortable? Yeah, yeah. Alright, so that might be a bit heavy for you, but it's okay. Alright, so that is essentially. Um, done in process right, right and, yeah. this is it so now we are ready to go into the hot zone you can take a, a full look of all of the PPE that has to be worn every single day so picture this your healthcare worker you're coming here to see about our COVID-19 patients and every day before you head into the hot zone you need to do this entire process with assistance. Now, how long would someone stay in the hot zone for in this? So, we, we try not to let it go over four to six hours because of things like dehydration, persons fainting, you know, things like that. Um, you know, but sometimes we have extraneous circumstances. Sometimes we have to go in twice. You know, sometimes we get very sick patients that we have to go above and beyond sometimes. Because I think in, in here is a, a bit warm and I ain't reached the hot zone yet. So then if I'm in the hot zone for four to six hours in this, I'm probably coming out drenched. Yeah. And these are the circumstances that you all have to work under every single day. So it would yeah. be the doctors and the nurses as well in our hot zone. So guys at home, we're asking you all if you really care about our healthcare workers, we don't want to put them through this for much longer again. So we want to ease up the hospital load. We want to ease the number of patients in here. So you all know what you got to do, right? We don't want you here. It's not a nice place to be. I mean, as nice as the facility is, I'm sure back home is much more comfortable. So next time you see us, Doc and myself, we are going to be live and direct home front on the front line in the hot zone.
as promised, we are on the front line and we are ready to enter a hot zone at a COVID-19 health facility. Here with Dr. Taylor, who's going to walk us through the entire thing. Doc, you ready? Yeah, let's go. So, Doc, this is the hot zone. So if anyone comes in here with old PPE, they are susceptible to get the virus? Yeah, you are not allowed to enter here without full PPE at all. At all, okay. So that's why we we, we fully protected. Yeah. Alright, cool. Alright, so you continue here, you can see. Hi guys, hi guys. Hi. So this is critical day. Very critical day. Yeah. All are very sick actually. Wow. Yeah. You go this way. Alright, so this is actually our pediatric suit. Mm -hmm. So we have some pediatric patients. Well, because I mean, a lot of people would think that it's only the elderly who would contract the virus and really get ill. So you have cases like that? Yeah, especially in Delta. Delta cases? Yeah. Well, those are the ones that tend to present more to children. Mm -hmm. Alright, so guys are gonna take a look inside. Good night. So here we have okay. mm -hmm. so this is where we usually have the two shots, I got a child, and then we can have them um the parents and the reclining chair and the comfort. So the parents will be allowed to stay with the infant throughout the duration. When I was a boy, my mother took me to be vaccinated. In those days, we had polio, we had mumps, we had measles, we had yellow fever, we had all kinds of things going around. And unless you were vaccinated, you couldn't get into school. Why? Because we had to protect each other. And the reason for being vaccinated was to make sure that yourself and all the other children in your school were safe. And nothing has changed. Today, it's the same thing. Why do we need to be vaccinated against COVID? Well, because unless we're vaccinated, we're going to open and close this society again and again and again. You see the starvation in people. You see how many people, how many businesses have gone down. You see how people are, are really having a difficult time right now. If we're not being vaccinated, this is going to continue for a year, for two, for three years. We have to see vaccination as a way out of this pandemic. This little microbe has gotten to all of us. What I love most about this country is the way that we can lime and have fun and drop into each other's houses. And we can't do any of that because of this microbe. How do we get past it? By vaccinating. Because when enough of us are vaccinated, then we keep this country safe. Let's all do our part. Let's vaccinate TNT. Have one of the patients with us who is COVID 19 positive. I'm going to speak with Mr. Miller to get a bit of an idea of what his extra experience was like. So, Mr. Miller, mm -hmm. how are you? I'm okay. I'm not right. Tell us a bit in terms of when you first got your symptoms. Did you know that you had COVID? No, I did not know. Um, well, I'm a kidney patient, right? Right. So, I went to Mount Hope uh -huh. to get. The fluid drain from my body. I right. got something that I have to much at 
and the door is decopetous. I come back first. Step. Oh, right. So you didn't have a clue. No, I don't have a clue. So um, you got any sort of symptoms at all? Yeah, I was weak. I was well weak. I was mm. I was not have no fever, no headache, and just nothing. I was just weak. I couldn't help myself. Right. So after a while, I came, but it started to become more every day. Right. Every day, I can still get up to go to the washroom. Mm. I was well weak and tired and tired and tired and tired. How was the breathing at that point? At that point, we were worse still. Mm-hmm. And when I tell the person to come up here, in seconds, I tell you, this thing dangerous. In seconds, my building shop. Mm-hmm. I had on two oxygen tanks. One, the oxygen tank, and the next one is the wall. I was right? Right. And I couldn't be proper because it was going down, going down. I had to take it off. I had to take off oxygen from my face. No, it's not going down. It's not going down very fast. And what that, what that felt like when you see the oxygen, you know, like you Ooh, try to breathe. <laughs> frightening. Mm. Very frightening. It, it, like in a pool of water, mm. and it tried like it, it, nothing, nothing, nothing is going in the system. So you're, you're getting difficult to breathe in. Very, 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 very bad. I'll just uh, take off. Mm. Now, one of the others, and two, I'll just take off one. That is it. It happened to be two all the time. Yeah, it happened to be two all the time. And you were gasping, though, right? Yeah. I read so bad that I started from the blood. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And can can go to the doctors and in okay? Right. Real nice doctors and nurses up here. Right. So you you were bring up blood, mm-hmm. you gasping for breath. Mm-hmm. And then you point in time you thought to yourself, you know what I Yes, <laughs> yes, every second. Mm. Every second I thought I couldn't make it. But we help our board. I come to the take off from upstairs here at the level 4. Right. And I come around to the ICU. Uh-huh. And I start to move when I wanted to move. But first day, you know, it's a good day to help my assistant. And my need assistance. Okay. And that was very good. So, so how long you have you been in here? Well, one half way from when you can remember. I got tested on the 13th of last month. Right. Right. And I went to the 14th, home 14th, home 14th, the 40 days. And then I come back out. I went with my sister. And two weeks after, we left the break up, and she, then she took back a month of this and of this. I think it was the second of this month. Right. Until the second, so like I say, almost a month now. Next week, please, we'll make it a month. Oh, okay. Almost a month, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you yeah, see your family? Yeah. In a month time. <laughs> in so a month. Yeah, yeah, because what the doctor said is that in this part, you know, they're not allowing anybody to no, get any visitors. No, no, no. So they, that means... You see, you can't do them wrong, yeah? Right. Because you don't want the family, all right, they come and see us. And then come and get infected and they die. Because right. since up here, I see real people dying. Yeah. Yes, I saw real people dying. And this is not a game thing. I am on the basis of you that have COVID. But this, I am in your zone. I am telling the people out there, please, only do the right thing, please now. Do the right thing. Follow the guidelines. Try, please now. Oh gosh. Because this is not a game. They call the city kind of things I see up already. I well, don't like it. Mm. People dying with this COVID thing. It's a very serious thing. And the people are here to help you, yes. But we have to help ourselves the same. We all the masks. If we're not about you, they're going to all the place. Sanitize. Do the right thing. Please, people. I can tell all you, I'm a COVID patient up in Arima, the hospital. And please, please, all you, listen. Do the right thing, please, all so, Mr. Mello, I want to thank you very much. Um, we wish you a speedy recovery. Yeah, uh, you're looking at high spirits. Yeah, I'm almost there, I'm almost there. Yeah, I'm almost there. Yeah, I'm almost there. Yeah, I'm almost there. Yeah, I'm almost there. I'll be waiting for you on the outside. Okay, that's all right. So, you all know this directly from our COVID 19 patient right here on the front, on the front line. And we are back from being on the front line. It was definitely a sobering experience for me. So I'm hoping that you would have got that full experience yourselves and see how serious this battle is against COVID-19. And we need everyone hands on deck as we fight this together. We want to remind you as well to head over to our PED Cares Foundation website, pedcares.org, and donate, 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 so we can help the kids who are our future. My name is Rome. Thank you all very much for joining us once again on Homefront.